Hello there, my fellow Space AT&T employees, and welcome back to some Battletech lore. Today we're gonna take a look at a subtopic I didn't even know existed. Battle Armor Designs from Comstar. Surprisingly, it turns out that the discount Adeptus Mechanicus of Battletech were quite the pioneers when it came to this type of thing. Initially, I thought that the Grey Death Legion were the pioneers of battle armor, but it seems Comstar played a significant role as well. There are three particular designs we're gonna take a look at today. The Nighthawk, the Tornado, and the Kobold. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first of today's designs is the Nighthawk, weighing at 0.4 tons and costing 295,000 sea bells. The officially titled Nighthawk Mark 21 is a so-called PAL, or Power Armor Light Design, and a progenitor of modern Inner Sphere battle armor. The original Nighthawk was based upon exoskeletons originally used for commercial purposes during the Star League. It would take 15 years and 20 prototypes before the SLDF finally perfected the design that would eventually become produced. That might answer your possible question as to why it starts at Mark 21. A working prototype was introduced in 2718, which was followed by two more years of field testing and finally full production, entering service with Special Forces Command. The numbers of the Nighthawk were never as large as the SLDF actually wanted them to be, partly to keep its existence a secret, as the suits were given to the Special Armed Forces known as Blackhearts, and their deployment was not public knowledge. While plans were made for a design of the Nighthawk to reach the SLDF Royal Units, the Amaris Civil War and the fall of the Star League prevented all that. When Jerome Blake took control of Terra, some Nighthawk suits were discovered which Comstar would use to outfit their own commando teams following the creation of the Com Guards. However, Comstar did not have the capability to build more of them, and attempts to duplicate the design led to the creation of the inferior Tornado. We're gonna get to that in a few minutes. Several Nighthawk suits were eventually discovered on Karbala by the Great Death Legion and turned over to the NAIS for study. But it would take the word of Blake, following their schism with Comstar, and in conjunction with the Free Worlds League, to overcome the technical challenges and begin production of new suits in 3065. Comstar quickly began producing their own new Nighthawks on Tukaid, sharing their output with the Second Star League, at least until the factory was destroyed in 3067. With the start of the Jihad, the Word of Blake also supplied Nighthawk suits to protectorate militia infantry units. However, it would take Comstar many years to restart production on Ark Royal, with shady production still seeing it reserved for covert operations. It was also around 3071 that the Nyabs Association found among their old Star League records plans for the Nighthawk suits and began producing of both the Mark 21 and the Mark 22 to fend off any belligerent periphery neighbors. The Nighthawk itself is little more than a heavily armored sneak suit with an integrated ECM suite. While it only has 120 kilos of armor, it is enough to stop a couple of bursts out of a machine gun. Protection against small arms fire was considered excellent nevertheless. The armor plating has stealth capabilities similar to an IR and ECM sneak suit, enabling the Nighthawk to move undetected and making it very difficult to target even if they are fired upon. The suit is also quite mobile, with integrated jump jets allowing it to leap up to 90 meters at a time, and it does come equipped with an extended life support system. Although it does not have integrated weapons, it does utilize two armored gloves, enabling the trooper to wield infantry-scale weapons with no loss of dexterity. Although the gloves are not that powerful, they are still useful when a squad makes anti-mech attacks, and allows them to utilize the handholds of Omnimechs to travel into battle mounted. The Mark 22 of the Nighthawk was first developed in 2749. It was a prototype for use by the SLDF Royal Divisions, but unfortunately, as mentioned before, the Amari Civil War prevented all that. Equipment-wise, it sacrifices the ECM for an auto-loading grenade launcher in the left shoulder. 
The second of today's designs is the aforementioned Tornado. Also massing 0.4 tons, with a cost of 279,000 sea bills. The officially titled P-12 Tornado is another light power armor suit created by Comstar in the late 29th century to equip their special forces with added protection. It is based on the Starlink Defense Force Nighthawk suit. It is custom fitted to the wearer, which makes them unusable to anyone else without major adjustments and also means that the user has to maintain their physical condition. No frequent trips to Space McDonald's if you are one of these pilots. The advantages of the suit do make up for the drawback though, as it does increase the wearer's strength, allowing them to hit hard and faster than unarmored infantry, while also avoiding the bulk of full battle armor. It also incorporates stealth armor and an adaptive camo system, which hides the tornado from all types of sensors. The armor is also good enough to stop small arms fire and even heavy weapons like a flamer from hurting the wearer. It has a built-in HUD system providing a wealth of information on the suit and surrounding environment, including low light and visual magnification gear. The suit does not aid mobility in any way though, so a tornado squad is not faster than any comparable squad of foot infantry although it does include a two-connection port at the waist allowing modified weapons to draw power from the military power pack. The Tornado was used many times throughout the 30th and 31st century by Comstar and its intelligence service ROM, particularly against the Draconis Combine. Although in the wake of the Comstar schism, the suits also fell into the hands of the Word of Blake. During the infamous Operation Odysseus, Blake's special forces wearing tornado suits were able to overpower the unarmored guards protecting Terra's SDS, or Space Defense System. This was in advance of the main invasion force, and they were instrumental in securing the Titan shipyards too. While Comstar still maintains their P-12 models, the word of Blake changed the designation of their tornado suits to G-12, and altered the software and user interface not only to prevent possible Comstar infiltration, but to also enhance situational awareness so that the users were less inclined to remove the helmet. Additionally, they increased production of their tornado suits, though not for their personal use, since that had fallen out of favor for the SLDF Nighthawk, which the Word of Blake could not build on their own. Instead, these new G-12s were used to equip Blake's Marines and security, as well as being sold to the Free Worlds League. In a similar fashion to the Nighthawk it is based on, the Tornado mounts no integrated weapons. What it does have, however, again, is two armored gloves, allowing the wearer to use standard infantry weapons. Just like the Nighthawk, the gloves permit the wearer to make anti-mech attacks or ride on Omnimax. The suit also functions without the gloves too, so a trooper can remove them to improve his or her manual dexterity at the expense of some protection. The third and final design of today is the Kobold. Massing at three quarters of a ton and a cost of 293,000 sea bills. The origins of this one can be traced back to 3062, when the infantry of the Free Rasselhaig Republic's 2nd Cavalieri were trying to acquire Kage battle armor. With tensions rising on all fronts, however, the Draconis Combine was unwilling to fulfill the Republic's request. Undeterred, Jack Coslow continued to lobby his commanders until given approval to approach the SLDF and Comstar with a proposal to create a new battle armor design. The Republic would supply raw material, while Comstar and the SLDF would supply the technological know-how for a development project funded by all three factions. Research and development was started on Gramium, while construction of a prototype manufacturing line was rushed to completion. Originally aiming to copy the Kage's capabilities, the development team soon proposed changes to make the suit more effective as a frontline combatant, while also retaining the reconnaissance capabilities of the combine design. The prototype entered testing schedule in 3055, with the Republic's 2nd Cavalieri and the Comguard's 116th Division. Unfortunately, the SLDF was forced to pull out of the project because of the ongoing conflicts between member league states and cut their side of the funding. The early problems with the suit's stealth systems under conditions of high humidity were quickly solved, 
and Gromium Creations started full production in 3069. Building on the experience of the Second Cavalieri, the Kung's Armee used the Cobalt as the base of a new battle armor battalion, attached to the Third Dracons, the Second Freeman, and the Third Hussars. When doing battle with the Word of Blake, the Cobalt performed well, holding its own against the Blake's purifiers and phalanxes. Improving ties with the Clan Ghost Bear provided the Republic with limited access to Clan battle armor technology too. The more conservative bears, on the other hand, remain very suspicious of incorporating stealth elements into their armored infantry, and they showed no interest whatsoever in inferior inner sphere technology. Although sacrificing some of the Kage's mobility, the Cobalt can carry heavier weapons, in the form of an integral anti-mech weapon, normally a support laser or an auto-grenade launcher on a modular mount on the right arm. Each Cobalt squad also carries a support weapon, usually a tag unit with which they operate closely with units armed with Arrow 4 artillery and semi-guided LRMs. Regular practice is to have the squad leader carry the support weapon slung under the suit's left arm, leaving the hands free, while the other squad members carry an anti-personnel weapon on the same arm. Slightly better armored than the Kage, the Cobalt can withstand a direct hit out of a medium laser. The armor shares the same stealth capabilities as the Kuritan design, and an important part of the training has the troopers learn to use its electronics. The Cobalt XC3 variant was built by Comstar as a test platform for the Battle Armor C3i system. Although effective in combat, the engineers had to remove 20% of the armor used in the suit, and replace the existing weapon mounts with just one AP weapon mount. This is essentially a spotter for other friendly units, as the AP weapon mount will only allow it to engage enemy infantry. Finally, the Cobalt 2C is protected by improved stealth armor and carries an ECM suite, light tag, and a light machine gun. It is also equipped with a VTOL movement system to increase its utility as a spotter. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these Comstar battle armor designs for today. In my opinion, Comstar does not need battle armor at all. Why would they need battle armor when you can just cut off the internet? A far graver threat if you ask me. Joke aside, they do seem to put a lot of interest in stealth capability, which does make sense, considering how they operate. What about you though? Did you know any of these designs? Did you ever use any in your own games? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on the matter in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode or found it informative, please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, this is GDN signing out.